Hello and welcome to the latest Global Cities video series. And today I'm with Paul Williams from Derwent London. Hi, Paul. Welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. Um, so today we're here to talk about Derwent, but I just thought it's important to sort of set the context and let everyone sort of know a little bit of background about you. So uh, you joined Derwent in 1987. Yes, that's right. Uh, appointed to the board in 1998. Correct. And then CEO in 2019. Yep. So that's, that's 36 years at one company. So that's pretty impressive. Pretty unusual. Um, may, maybe a silly question. Has anyone been there longer than you? No, I'm employee number four. So John and Simon were the founders and we had a finance director. So I'm employee number four. So I'm the longest standing employee, but we have one who's been a few months late, less than me. Yeah, very, very impressive. Um, fantastic. Right. So just into some quick fire questions. Yep. Um, and could you just first of all, just summarise the business for everybody watching? We're an office provider, central London, five and a half billion pounds. Go far east as sort of Shoreditch, the T building, about far as west probably as Paddington. I always say, got the ultimate environmental policy. If you can't walk to a building, we're not interested. About two thirds of it's in the West End, which is very busy. Yeah, fantastic. And in terms of the demand for the, for the real estate that you're offering to tenants, where does it come from primarily? Well, a whole range of sectors. And we did a letting earlier this year to PIMCO, really good letting, 100,000 square foot pre-let, about 12.5% above ERV, but we've got people like Burberry, got a range of creative occupiers over in, in, in Shoreditch. So it's a broad brush. It's, it's not the financial services as in traditional the city, but it's a broad brush and, and professional services as well. So we're very lucky. We're generally multi-let, so we have a variety of occupiers. Yeah, and I think that's a sort of that diversity in the tenant base is what's always sort of we found fascinating. It's not, as you say, office, finance, and very one sector. You've got you know huge depth and demand from from that's many right. sectors. Um, and just you know thinking about real estate, we always think about NAV as being a fantastically bad way to measure a real estate company because it misses so many things. What would you sort of think is that, like maybe the jewel in your crown? What makes your company valuable? Uh, for investors like us. I mean, firstly, you touched on right at the beginning the people. We've been together a long time. We've seen many cycles together. We're all about value creation through buying buildings well or refurbishing the well or developing the well. So firstly, I'd say the people, but we're mm. also spotting new locations. But you know, if we look at the clusters, look at Old Street, but also our Fitzrover cluster, people together, our new lounges and things. So being a bit disruptive, doing things a bit differently and making sure that we work with a really great portfolio. Yeah, no, yeah, we certainly kind of a, a apply a management premium to the company, think very highly of the, of the team. Thank you. Um, and then with regard to the real estate you own, how easy is it for somebody to try and recreate that portfolio to try and you know, build assets which might compete with you? Well, I would say it's been curated over 30 odd years. We've got some assets that we bought back in the early 1990s. I think it would be pr really difficult to try and create this portfolio again. We built very early on in the 80s and the 90s and also uh, in the in the noughties. Um, so, you know, we've assembled this portfolio. It's a working portfolio. We do sell. We've sold about 800 million over the last few years. And we'll, we bought one as well for the future. So it's adding to the portfolio, but also selling those assets we think won't perform. Yeah. And then obviously London is key to driving the business. How do you sort of see London today? There's been lots of noise about Brexit uh, and all sorts of things. And so how do you see London as driving your business forward from here? Well, I think London's remarkably resilient. If you see some of the negativity that out in, out in America, I think London feels very different. You know, the West End particularly, I always say beware of averages. The vacancy rate in the West End is about 3.5%, much lower than the city or even Docklands, yeah. and far, far lower than you see uh, in the States and other places. So London's a resilient city. It, changes quite regularly, attracts lots of global capital, lots of different occupiers. The West End's busy, it's buzzing, and it's got a whole variety of things. It's got theatres, it's got restaurants, it's got retail. So London's a special place. Yeah, yeah. And then from a, a business perspective, as you look out over the next five years, what is it that most excites you about the business? Well, I think what excites me is that we do have a good pipeline going forward. I think we're about 1.8 million square feet of new build over the next decade. We've got 800,000 square foot of refurbishments. We'll probably do a bit more of that over the next few years. So keep creating some really good amenity rich green buildings. I think we've done three net zero carbon buildings so far. And of course, little known fact, we've got five and a half thousand acres up in Scotland. 
We're going to build our solar farm, 100 old acres of that, 18.84 megawatts, and grow some electricity. So actually helping our occupiers with sustainability and keep doing things a bit differently. Yeah. Now, I've mentioned the solar farm to a few clients and had a number of sarcastic comments about sunshine in Scotland. Um, so uh, uh, that's uh, something that we're aware of. But yeah, They have a lot of daylight in Scotland, particularly in the summer, and they, yeah. I think that's the important matter. I will, I'll make sure I come back with that retort. Yeah. Um, and then from a sustainability point, you mentioned it just then, green buildings, huge amount going on in you know really everything that you read about at the moment about sustainability. So what's the biggest challenge or attribute that, that Derwent has uh, for sustainability? Well, I think one of the things we think about a lot is embodied carbon. You know, yeah. how much of the basement and foundations we keep if we're going to do a new build, how much can we really refurbish? And then scope three, our occupiers, electrical consumption, etc. We're going to work with them trying to reduce consumption. So we're rolling out intelligent buildings to try and have sensors, try and work out what we are consuming and reducing consumption. So it's reducing consumption and dealing with the embodied carbon. Yeah. Yeah, embodied carbon is something that we think carefully about as well. So yeah. I agree with you on that. Um, and now some completely non-real estate related questions. Uh, who's the most famous person you've met? I've been lucky enough to meet the king, so he's pretty famous. Yeah, he's certainly up there. That's very good. Uh, and who wins a fight between a lion and a tiger? I'd score it a, call it a score draw, but um, but I would say probably a score draw one all. But... Okay. Uh, and do you prefer cheese or chocolate? Oh, definitely cheese. Definitely cheese. Okay. And then your favourite city? My favourite city is, I, I'd, I would say obviously say London. You might have to exclude London. But you, I would yeah. exclude, I would say Bristol, because that's where I was born and that's where my yeah. football team comes from. Very good. Perfect. Um, Paul, thanks very much for joining us and thank you to everybody for, for watching. Thank you for having me.